Welcome back to another episode of Agency Highway. I'm your host, James Rose, and we are joined again by Jason Resnick. Thanks for joining me again, man. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. So this is actually part two uh, in a well, two-part series so far because uh, <laughs> we ran out of time in the last one. Uh, but So make sure you go back and listen to the previous episode on uh, Jason's specialization system for choosing a niche. Um, and, and we talk about why that's so important. Uh, we cover a lot of the common objections and fears around specialization, like if you are you know, worried that you're going to lose work by, by you know, filtering out certain leads, uh, we sort of cover that. Um, but yeah, if you don't already know Jason, um, man, he does so much stuff for freelancers, um, <laughs> assuming you haven't listened to the previous episode. Um, but yeah, helps people build a better business, uh, in, I guess you'd say, is it mostly just web design or do you do other stuff as well? Uh, mostly web developers and designers. Yeah. yeah um, cool. I talked to some, uh, marketers and SEOs and such, but for the most yeah. part, developers and designers. Yeah, cool. So we were originally going to talk about uh, your lead generation system, but it's kind of a prerequisite to, to be specialized, which is why we did uh, part one of this whole series. So, okay, assuming we've now got a specialization, we've got an industry, we know why we're working with them, we've got our sort of tick boxes, yes and no, red flags, you know, so we know who we're going to work with. So we can filter everyone through that. What's the next step? How do we get some leads in that system? Yeah. First, you have to, one, be able to accept those leads. So put them through a process, right? So you have those checklists, so to speak, from those quadrants that we spoke about in part one. So keep those on hand. If you have to sticky tape them to the wall behind your monitor, do so. I did for a long time. Wow. Uh, because you don't want to fall back, right? Like you don't want to like, oh, I do need to pay rent and, and such. Um, there's always the better project around the corner anyway. That's from what I've learned. That's um, awesome. I really like that, sticking it behind the computer. Yeah, uh, you have to have it in front of center, right? Yeah. Because you're on a call, whether it's your phone or a video call, you know, like you're looking around the wall like, oh, yeah, it's like, your compass, so to speak. Like if you get off on a tangent, you know, like, okay, this is, sounds like a good project. And then you see your list there. Mm. You're like, Oh wait, no, nope. uh, oh, that's a red flag. <laughs> right? yep. So, so you and want not that to the side, not to the side, because <laughs> that's where I'm just looking at all my stuff now. And I realize how very little I actually look at it. Uh, even though it's not, <laughs> it's only 90 degrees. I'm just like, man, I never see it. But if it was on this part of the wall, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but once you have that, then you know exactly who you're targeting, right? Like what kind of industry you're going for, you know, what to look for, like who in the company you want to talk with, like whether it's the business owner or some other decision maker, if you're going for a big enterprise level type of client. Um, so you know who to look for and that's where you start, right? And I always say this too, that you have to do something manual before you automate it, right? Like we always get nice and, you know, excited about like all these tools and automation and such. But if you don't know that it, it works manually first, then the tools aren't going to help you. It, they're not going to scale you up in doing, you can't scale zero, right? So, <laughs> so first thing you do is, and this is what I do still to this day is, use search on Twitter. Uh, I search on Craigslist. Yes, Craigslist is still a viable means at which to get projects. Uh, wow. and, we don't, so and, we don't really do Craigslist here. I'm wondering if Gumtree, which is like our equivalent would, would be an option. I'm going to go on. Uh, see the thing, the thing though, that the caveat there with Craigslist is that good projects get posted and they find a couple of people and then they take it down. So oh, you wow. have to be front of, you have to be front and center, right? So like I landed a pro, I landed a project with Canon, right? The, the, the company, the, the camera company. For yeah. the photo, uh, I landed a project from an agency that did Sony, Bose, uh, Adobe's, Right. Like, so the projects are there, but you have to be front in line. Wait, wait, wait. Um, so like they had advertised on Craigslist for a web developer. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. <laughs> so 
but but what they do is that and 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 i'll get into how you get to that front of the line there is before you do all these things right like i would basically designate a night and it was always tuesday nights for me where i took from six o'clock to eight o'clock and i did lead gen right and what that meant for me was to go out on twitter to go out on craigslist and basically look for projects that for certain keywords that I was looking for at the time I was looking for WordPress remote. Um, and I was looking in, especially on Craigslist, certain locales where like tech was booming. So like Nashville and, you know, San Francisco and New York and Chicago and such. Um, but basically doing, I had like a, I had a text document of all my search queries, right? Yep. To be able to cut and paste and just kind of do these things inside of Craigslist and Twitter. Uh, and then I just sent cold emails out to them. And the cold emails basically just were, hey, I noticed you had a project. And a lot of times it was for full timers, right? Oh, so yeah. I would change the conversation around, especially if they looked like it was something that I could do for them, right? Um, I would just basically change the, the thing around. I'd say, hey, look, I realize you're looking for a full-timer, but if you are interested in hiring a contractor, this is what I do. Um, this is the projects that I've done like yours because remember, I went through that exercise to find the other projects that I could show them. Yeah. Um, and if all of this sounds good, just simply reply with a yes and we can continue the conversation, right? Giving them a clear call to action at the end of the cold email is simple. Don't leave it open-ended. Don't, you know, because if they're interested, you want them, you want to tell them the next step. And I'm a big avid fan of just giving what the next step is to move the conversation along, no matter what stage, cold email, warm email, proposals, anything, right? Mm. So I would do that. I'd send out 20, 25, 30 of these emails, two, three might come back, right? But once I did that for about a month and I got projects out of that, Canon was one of my first ones. Um, and it was, then I was like, okay, well, instead of me sitting here on Tuesday night and I realized that for one, the Craigslist thing was so important to be front of line because I would see an article or a posting and I would email myself the posting. And then I would look on like Thursday morning and it's gone. Wow. And I'm like, what happened here? Like, <laughs> I, I, I sent myself a broken link and I would go back and search and I couldn't find it and all that stuff. But it was a recurring pattern there that I was like, oh, cool. so they, they just post it and they take it down. They probably get an influx of applicants and then they take it down. Right. So, what I did was I basically set up IFTTT rules uh, to go ahead, search these places, and then send me, at the time I had an Android phone, I used Push Bullet, basically a notification anytime some alert came up. And IFTTT or Zapier or any of these kind of tools that search, you know, I think free tools are always searching every 15 minutes. but. Mm if it was something that I liked or really fit the bill for, I would just, I'd get the notification on my phone, click the, the link. I would shoot my canned email out and done. Right. Damn. So I was, so as soon as they posted it, I was notified within 15 minutes and I had an email out. So that's how I started. And I still do that to this day, right? Like I've niched down my business to drip and convert kit and all these other tools too. And it's so easy to just set up a recipe to get yourself alerted. And I've moved away from the email and push notification to my phone because I don't need any more coming yeah. through my phone. At this point. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, I, I, have, I literally have a channel in my own Slack group called Sales Team. And that's my sales team. It's basically these alerts that wow. tell me when something happens on the socials that is of interest to my, me and my business so that... I shoot the oh, link, man. I jump into the conversation. That's how I grew my, the drip side of my business after I got certified was drip. I love them, but their support is lacking. Right? Like, <laughs> okay. So people always go to Twitter and they say, Hey, at get drip, have a problem. Where are you guys? Question mark, whatever. Right. So I would just set up a Zapier recipe for looking for any mentions of get drip and a question mark. 
and send it to my <laughs> Slack chat. Oh, man. Oh, we and need to talk I, more about this. I <laughs> love this kind of automation. Holy crap. Like- and, and so, <laughs> right. And so what happened was that I would jump into those co- Twitter conversations real early on before Twitter could even, uh, before Drip was even there. And it got to a point where Drip started recognizing me. And then they just started giving me work. They were just like, hey, <laughs> just go to Jason. And, or, Jason or they would come into the thread a couple days later and say, oh, it looks like Jason took care of it for you. And they started to recognize me. And yeah. that's, that's why I said, like, if you know who you're targeting, especially if you have location or technology, right, or a company or something like that, Twitter, just search mentions with a question mark at the end of it, you know, mm. that because the pe- <laughs> people are emotional. And if they oh, have yeah. a problem, they got to take it to, to the socials, right? And they're going to yeah. complain about it and they're going to be there. So that's where you need to be I'm if you have the solution. I'm absolutely stealing this. Like basically today <laughs> I'm setting something up because I've just had a couple of people randomly tell me they want to start paying me for Zapier advice because I do some pretty tricky stuff in, in Zapier. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so now I'm like, oh, what if I set up like a Zapier consultancy type thing? And this is exactly, <laughs> holy crap. I'm gonna, and I will be using Zapier to do it, obviously. So <laughs> right, yeah. I brilliant. mean, it's, it's just... It, it, like, and the thing is too, like me, I'm not a sales guy, so I'm not going to be picking up a phone. I'm not going to be knocking on doors. I'm not going to do that stuff. Mm. And after I did all that self-reflecting and distilling down my niche and specialization and who I was going to work with and such, I was like, okay, now I got to put my skills to the sales part of it. Right. And so I was like, I'm great at Googling things, right? So like (laughs) I got to be able to search on these social platforms, right? So I started messing around with their search queries and advanced operations and and all these other things. Um, And then I was like, okay, well, once I had done it manually a whole bunch of times to get results out of that, then I was like, okay, well, I have my text file. Let me throw my text file into Zapier and IFTTT with whatever services worked in those things. Um, Because Craigslist, I don't think, had something on Zapier or vice versa. I I forget which way, but I used both of those platforms. There are um, scraping tools that um, can make things Zapier ready. Uh, Yeah, like, yeah. Like through RSS feeds and even like reading websites to pull out, like turning things like search criteria on websites into, into feeds, which are pretty cool. I used to oh, do yeah. that for like notifications of um, AppSumo deals uh, because oh, before, okay. before they were available to everybody. Cause I used to, to promote a lot of things to people like only the impo- the good stuff I used to promote. Mm-hmm. I feel like, yeah, a lot of stuff on there so so now, but um, back when they were having lots of good deals, I'd always be on it first because I'd have Zap through like a visual mm. change detection tool, or it'd like pull out right. parts mm. and zap it to me, and I'd be on it like that. Yeah, I used <laughs> I used to do things like that with Uptime Robot. Oh yeah, right. Like if uh, I forget what it was. Oh, it was T Fury. Right, the T-shirt <laughs> daily oh, wow. thing when they did the daily thing, yeah. when they changed, you used to have to get it before like noon my time in New York. Otherwise, they'd sell out. So like oh, I would wow. set up these things like on uptime <laughs> robot. Like if they, the button changed, the text of the button <laughs> changed, <laughs> send me the notification. That's so good. Um, yeah, but I mean that's for me. I had to think like a developer to make my sales right, and that for me was the way that. Yeah, I, it worked. And mm. I, to this day, I, I still use the same old recipes. I've got, I don't know, I couldn't even tell you, count them how many I've got in there now. But, you know, it just evolves over time. And, you know, got them for Drip. I got them for ConvertKit. I've got them for WooCommerce. I've got them for subscriptions for WooCommerce. I've got them for, you know, different industries that I like to work with. Mm, um, people, you know, other, you know, colleagues of mine. Um, you know, just to know, like if I, if there's an opportunity there, I get pinged in Slack. I look at it. If it's nothing that, you know, is overly important or something that's irrelevant, then I just let it go. But if it's there, then I could jump in. I could stop what I'm doing and jump into the conversation and be first in line and being first in line, especially on Craigslist, when those big brands post, if that's what you're going for, 
you know, you, it, you look professional. You look like you've got your stuff together. Um, yeah. Especially if you're like 15 minutes right on the nose there, you know, before, you know, right as they post it, because you probably didn't even get that person off the, the site before your email shows up in their inbox and they're like, holy cow. All right. Yeah, well, yeah, this yeah. is the first one. Let me, let me, uh, let me go try to solve my problem. Bloody hell. And, and you know, if it's a good email, they're probably going to be stoked because anyone that's tried to hire anyone before knows how much crap you get in mm -hmm. and how many bad, um, applications you have to filter through so yeah, to get you have like an to epic one immediately would right and you have to make it somewhat personal you have to make it oh, yeah. relatable you know like it has to make sense to the conversation that the person is you know the problem that the person is trying to solve and you know i sure i had a canned message but i even had like brackets like here take whatever you know from the article and change this portion mm. right or you know and you know, it takes five minutes, not even right. Yeah. But like just to personalize that there, like cold outreach is terrible. Like it's just uh -huh. like a heart wrenching thing, right? Like yeah, it'd be like a hundred emails. If you get one back, then that's good. And like yeah. that one is just a no, <laughs> like it's not even a positive, <laughs> right? But like, yeah. the 1% is good, right? But like, if you just take a little bit of time and personalize it, you automatically yeah you exponentially increase your percentage. yeah at first when you were talking about this i was like it sounds like something you could outsource but the more i think about it the more i'm like nah especially if you're talking i mean you could you definitely could yeah. but i mean i think when you're dealing with these big brands and you've got potential like really big dollars on the line potentially like it would make sense to spend a couple of minutes to really personalize the email to your language their language you know mm -hmm. Hundred yeah. percent. And and like I was saying before too, there's a lot of side effects that happen to this too. Like you know, I was saying like Drip started to recognize my Twitter handle because I was yep. in the thread already and kept being in the thread, right? And I was getting emails from Drip customers saying that so and so from Drip recommended that I reach out to you. <laughs> Here's my problem. Can you solve it for me? Right? And then I would just put them through my process, right? Mm. And I was just like, okay, well, if I keep doing this and other brands start recognizing me, then great. <laughs> like, yeah. That's more, that's another avenue of business that's to my door that they're not going to do because they're worried about their products. They're not going to do custom stuff for their clients. But if they can refer their customers to somebody that solves their problem, whether or not it's a formal relationship or not, it helps everybody, right? It helps all three of us in that respect. So it, there's a lot there just from that lead gen process is that being first in line, you know, there's a lot of side effects there that, yeah. that you know, people. Are I've got see. so many ideas. I almost want to like pause this episode and like go and write down all my, uh, <laughs> all my buddy keywords and stuff that I'm going to be stuffing into all these automations that I'm going to build immediately after this. <laughs> <laughs> but this the thing is, is you have to and the thing that i thought like the mentions of brands and such that that's kind of like the low-hanging fruit right like those are the mm. easy ones and you probably automate those from the start but some of the things especially how you help right so like some of the stuff that i work in on the services side is decreasing the time to first buy right so when somebody you know <clears throat> opts into your email list from how long is it from the first purchase, right? I help my clients decrease that time and then create repeat buys off of that because you basically have 90 days to sell as much you can to somebody. That's mm -hmm. when the shiny object syndrome of the human brain kind of wears off, right? So a lot of these businesses, especially membership sites and coaches and such, they try to get them through the tripwire and then the membership program and then the coaching program as quickly as possible. Right. So, there's definitely, you have to understand the language that people have when they talk about their problems, they talk about their business and test it, right? Like put it out there in Twitter searches or even Google searches. And what you think is probably not the way they describe it, right? So you kind of have to do these manual things first. You know, especially in Twitter, it's easy because it's a fire hose, right? People are emotional. So they, yeah. they're going to say, so when you do the search in Twitter, instead, of, it always returns the top results, right? If you switch over to the latest results, 
you could kind of see how many posts within like the last number of hours or days and you could kind of gauge like okay these these tweets are not what i was looking for mm -hmm. or um you know there's like few and far between like it goes like a week or two out and you're like okay maybe i'm on the language but maybe i need to tweak it a little bit more and try to get involved so like once you start really honing in on the language of your customer mm -hmm. and how they talk about their problems and solutions then that's when you start getting alerts all over the place yeah and the the one thing that I love hearing is it's like, Oh my God, it sounded like you were talking just to me, you know, or like you described that, like, I, I don't know what the, the quote is, but it's like, if you can explain the problem to the client right. better than they can, then they assume you have the solution, which yep. is kind of what we've had with content snare quite a bit, right? Like I've had so many, so much good feedback at the start, like with our copy, like saying, Oh my God, this is like, it's speaking directly to me, blah, blah, blah. And that's because I did a bunch of customer interviews in the beginning and literally fed mm -hmm. their quotes back into the copy. hundred <laughs> percent. Yep. Yeah. I, that's, that's, I hate to say it, but like, that's really the first step, especially if you have your ideal clients already on the roster, so to speak, mm. just reach out to them. And this is what I did for a long time is I had quarterly temperature calls. I call them right where I just reach out and I say, Hey, look, not about the project, but I'd like 10 or 15 minutes of your time if we could just get on a, a Skype call. Um, I just want to ask you a couple of questions. And I would ask them first, how's their business? Because every business owner likes to talk about their business, right? So it starts opening the, the floodgates, the psychology, so to speak. Hmm. And then you ask them if they're a recurring client, right? Why you stay with me, right? And they'll be honest, you know, because... Hmm. And, and what they tell you is not what you think <laughs> all oh, yeah. the time. Right? Yep, absolutely. And, and then the other thing is, is what can I be doing better? Right. Um, the first two are kind of a primer to the last one because the last one is kind of like, you know, a client's not going to want to talk bad or, you know, give you criticism about your own business because they don't want to hear criticism about their own business. Right. So, but, you know, I say, look, hey, I'm a big boy. I can handle it. I want to make sure that you're getting from me what you expect. So, you know, what can I be doing better? Mm. And, you know, put your own personality on it. I always say, like, how can I be more awesome, right? Like, mm -hmm. that's just how. And, and you get enlightening things. And I'll, sometimes those things are so easy. Like, you know, like, hey, you know, just as an example, what I got a lot was I'm a developer that speaks the human language. Right? Like I don't talk techno mumbo <laughs> jumbo to them. And that, that first, that was, I was like, I kept on hearing that. And I yeah. was like, that's why they like me. So what do I do? I slapped it back on my website, right? Like I'm a developer. I don't, I talk. And that, that's something that I learned early on was I wanted to talk as if the other person was my grandmother. So I have to try to figure out how to relay the technical stuff it, yeah. so that my grandmother understands, right? And we are um, way too was, similar, hey, because that was like the same feedback I get <laughs> from all my clients. You were obsessed with automation. We wrote the same code languages back in the day. This is weird. This is creepy. <laughs> brother, <laughs> brother on the other side of the planet. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and, and the other thing too is like, you know, when I, when I started asking like, how can I be more awesome? I get like, you know what? We have calls, but it would be great if we just had a, a weekly call. Mm. Okay. Well, if it's that important to you, then I'll just raise my rate and yeah. we'll have a scheduled call. Yeah. And that's all. And, and awesome. that's what we, I'm not doing any more work. I'm just doing a half hour call. Right. Yeah. So this you never know, awesome, man. Wow. So, I mean, I don't even know where to go from here. So, <laughs> cause you <laughs> absolutely, this is such a ball. I, ho I hope this is as much of a bomb for everyone listening as it is for me. Cause I'm like, my brain is just going crazy now. Like, I've got so many ideas <laughs> that I want to write down. But, um, in the last episode, we kind of spoke about, uh, lead generation with your existing prospects. Is that part of your system? Did you want to go into that a little bit? Sure. Yeah. I mean, one is it's, it's simple because again, once you know who you're talking to and the problems that you, you solve, it's easy to formulate a sentence or two of what that is. So 
if you have existing clients or past clients even, sending them an email every 30, 60, or 90 days out, depending on how far out they are from you, um, is a matter of just saying, hey, look, we worked on this problem in the past. Uh, I'm going in a new direction. Um, and if you or you know somebody that has this problem, this is the type of work that I do now or however you want to phrase it, but basically saying like, I help X do Y so that they can achieve Z, right? So it's a simple formula, but just saying that statement, then they know exactly who you're looking for mm -hmm. and how you solve their problems. So now you're not getting the generalist websites anymore. You're not getting the generalist, you know, like, Hey, I need logo design. If you're not doing that anymore, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. whatever it might be. So it's very specific and you start to build up that rapport where if they do send you the bad lead, right. You could say, Hey, look, thanks for the lead. I appreciate the help. Um, it didn't work out because of X. Right. And just as a refresher, just in case this is my, so to speak, elevator pitch. And this is who mm. I help, you know, so that they can yeah, accomplish what, awesome. this, right? Hey. And you re-educate them constantly because you don't want to waste time, right? Yeah, like totally. I, I'm a big firm believer in not wasting time. So that's good. So what do you, this is just a random idea I had. Um, what do you think about setting up referral partnerships so you can like, I, I was just, the reason I thought about this is because, you know, we, we talked about the fears people have of specializing, um, uh, you know, that they're going to lose work. Have you or anyone in your, I guess that you've helped coach set up referral networks so they can still just like palm that work off to other people, maybe even get partner referral fees and stuff like that? Um, I don't know too much, um, if they've done fees and such, but, mm. I definitely know, I mean, from myself and as well as some of the people that have coached and inside of Feast as well, is that, you know, you start to find other people that have tangential businesses mm. to your own, yes. right? So, you know, the natural relationship is designers and developers, right? Yes. But you could even distill that even further down where, you know, for me, I help e-commerce businesses with like on-site personalization and email automation and marketing and behavioral marketing and all mm. those other kind of things. I don't do anything on the pay-per-click side. So I have a couple of people that I've built relationships over the time that if I do have a client that needs pay-per-click, whether AdWords, Facebook mm. or wherever, mm -hmm. I can refer them to the right person. Yeah. So I always encourage people to find those relationships because vice versa, right? Like it's, yeah. And you know, in that case, you don't need you like the referral fees was just something like you probably don't need it in that case because you're all going to just refer work to each other. But so, right. some people like to give out a referral fee. Some people don't even like accepting them. You know, they say, no, I just want to refer the work. I don't want anything out of this. But depends how people think. But yeah, it's just an mm -hmm. idea I sort of threw out. But yeah, so back on lead generation because um, we I digressed. I, I changed the... To, uh, course of the conversation there a little bit sorry but uh, <laughs> it's all just so bloody interesting um yeah so is there anything else you, you want to cover on lead gen specifically yeah i mean there's a lot there i mean it's a broad topic um, oh yeah obviously but the one thing that i like and we touched upon cold outreach a little bit but warm outreach is so important um and that's just all that really is, is, and when I talk about warm outreach, I talk about like your colleagues, right? Like there are plenty of WooCommerce developers out there, right? Like I don't look at them as my competition. I'm a solo business owner. Um, I know what I'm good at and I only need a handful of clients to do it, right? So if I can help refer them work and they do it back, it's just a matter of sending them an email once a quarter you know, not even, I, I, I literally send one email to them one per year. And I basically say, you know, I have a, a list of people, but basically once a quarter I go in and I send out about 20 emails and I say, you know, Hey, just wanted to let you know, I have some bandwidth. Um, you know, I'm doing X for Y, uh, so that they can achieve Z. And, uh, if you have any overflow work or you have any referrals or whatever, let me know. I, I, you know, 
awesome. And I think just a lot be of people to, miss that. Be, like, it, it's true. And, and the thing, the best part about it is because, is again, I'm not a sales guy, but they know what I do. So yeah. I don't have to educate them. So if they get a lead coming in, they know if I'm a fit or not. So mm. it comes that way. And, and especially if they know you, they're not going to be like against receiving that kind of email that you're just like, oh yeah, look, um, I've got some, got some space coming up. Like if you know, and it, it might just jog that thing in their mind that they 100%. go, yes, I know that guy. Uh, yeah. So, and I think a lot of people, I, I, cause, and I know that because I never did, I always forgot to do that kind of stuff. And someone had mentioned it you know, like on this episode, if someone's <laughs> listening on this podcast, if someone's listening and they're like, Oh yeah, I should totally do that again. Like that's how I would remember to go out and email people. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've got tons of processes. Like I, I use pipe drive and oh, I've nice. got tons of different pipelines in there for various different things. Um, mm. and kind of just move the cards and then cycle back at the end of the year, move the cards, cycle mm. back. So I know where they are and what I've said before. And, mm. You know, like I said, like I only send one email like that to every person per year because, you know, they're friends and colleagues. And of I don't course, want to bludgeon, of right? Yeah. Like I don't want to sell them, but just to stay front of mind, you know, oh yeah, like you said, like it'll trigger either a past lead that just came across their mm-hmm. desk or in the next month or so, they'll be like, oh, I, Jason said that he had some work, so maybe I'll just go refer him some. Yeah. And if you, if you don't ask, it doesn't happen. Right. You know what? And I'm a little bit reluctant to say this because Facebook to me is more, it's not so much about business unless I'm in the groups and stuff, but I've had a lot of success, success before from just asking on Facebook and saying that exact thing, like got some space coming up. Um, you know, again, not doing that every week, <laughs> Right. maybe once every six months or like just before, you know, it looks like you're going to hit a lull or something. Um, or even just asking questions, you know, I'm looking for some feedback on X and Y. And I've had like people just come out of the woodwork on Facebook. Sometimes just one post has resulted in some really cool things. Mm. But yeah, yeah don't I, go silly. I try to, I try to always, I, I'll be honest, like Facebook is not my, <laughs> Twitter <laughs> is my home away from home, so to speak. Yeah. Facebook for me, just, I don't know. I just, it was never comfortable there. Yeah, I don't know fair why, enough. But I mean, the groups. You know, like I'm in the groups for the business and such, but yeah. outside of that, like, you know, I don't know. It's just <laughs> a lot of drama on there. Oh yeah. I, yeah, I, I unfollow all stuff. the drama though. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm quite good at hiding it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, before, yeah, we end up just talking about all kinds of random stuff. I feel like um, <laughs> we should, should wrap that up because there's just, honestly, there's so much a, a, people can take away from this, I think. Well, at least I can. So, um, yeah, <laughs> that's I, I all win. that matters. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I had you on. I just wanted to pick your brain for free and <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Um, all right. So a couple of final questions. Um, if you were to go back to the start, uh, I feel like I answered them. I know the answer to this question from our chat anyway, but what would you just go and tell mini Jason just starting out? Yeah. For one, it, it's easy. I mean, get out of your own way. Like you don't know everything and you know, just if you take a, like I've realized if I trust my gut and take a step back a little bit and look at my business, my personal life, my professional life, whatever from a a step back, usually, you know, ends up good. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like I should just outline the the little key takeaways that we've had from this, this two part series. One is that like, taking time out to think on your business and making it a regular thing too. Um, mm-hmm. um, what else? Well, obviously specializing and, and a lead gen system with like, that's not even that cold, you know, it's kind of warm because they've actually asked for an automated way to find people that are um, looking for what you do. So that yeah, those three things are just epic. All right. Mm-hmm. Next question. Favorite piece of technology right now. I have to say, Bonjoro. Oh um, yeah. There, it's like a kind of little, it's a little yeah. app that uh, sits on your phone and you hook it up into your CRM or your email provider. And when something happens on that side, whether it's a new subscriber or the payments made or whatever it might be, it pings you on your phone and you can send like a little personalized video. Mm. Um, that has been the re- reception to those has mm. been outstanding. And yeah. like, 
I, I kind of equate it to email, right? Like you could send a thank you email and you know, people file it away. But if you send a personalized video to like a new subscriber to your newsletter or you know, thanking them for a payment or you know, hey, look, I'm doing a Facebook Live next week or whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, it goes a long way. And people, you know, the open rates are always because you, you get the title, personalized video from Jason. Like, yeah. what? What is this thing? <laughs> like, so it's just I, I love that app right now. Yeah, I was using it for a while and I can verify that it's pretty awesome. Um, my open rates weren't great for some reason, um, but I mucked around with a bunch of their settings. that They they helped me through. Their support's really good, obviously, because they're a yeah, support yeah. app. Um, and they helped me sort of get deliverability and stuff sorted. So that was good. But yeah, the, I, I had to stop doing it because it was too much. I was I took under too much in one sort of month um but i really want to get started on it again because like you said the reception is awesome that that level of personalization that people just don't see anymore right. um yeah all right so where can people find out more about you where, do you where would you like to send them uh just go to res.com that's with three z's um and right there on the home page you can sign up and i'll step you through setting up this lead gen system too absolutely um, and that'll hop you right onto my email list and that's where you learn all the things that I'm doing and working on and <laughs> yeah, what's not awesome. working, all those things. Yeah. And I can uh, vouch for Jason that he puts out a ton of awesome content. Um, obviously if you need help with, with drip convert kit or uh, WooCommerce, he's your man. Uh, no, there's another one, right message too. Was it? Yep. yep yeah. Right message too. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks Jason. Thanks for joining me. Yeah. Thanks for having me. See you guys.